hard to believe, but there are women out there who say they're too good looking for their own good. They're among the genetically blessed, the women who say their beauty has been a curse. Is it a real problem or do these women need a reality check? Jackie Quist reports. There are some women that seem to target me. It's definitely present amongst women. Tall, blonde, attractive, and in the sights of others. Everywhere, everywhere. Over the course of an hour, we film hidden from view to see how looks can kill. Everywhere. Nearly every woman who passes stares daggers. Why? Is it jealousy or does it go even further? It's sad to say, but honestly, some women literally hate you. Hated because she is beautiful. I often feel hatred by women. Too good looking for their own good. A lot of women who talk to me feel threatened by me. One of our first supermodels, Virginia Hayes Angular Beauty, scored her a career in the movies and the coveted role as a Bond girl. Now at 60, she concedes her good looks have been a blessing for her career, but when it comes to her private life, it's been a constant curse, scaring off the most eligible men. Honestly, I think that I'll be single probably for the rest of my life. And because of the problem that um, my looks have uh, created. It's definitely tall poppy syndrome. She is Generation Y's it girl, but in an age obsessed with looks, Ruby Jasenko's have often brought her unwanted attention. I have felt treated differently, whether it be by girls being nasty to me without even knowing me, judging me, you know, from walking into a place where they are and just not liking the look of me. And even men, you know, not wanting to approach me because they think, oh, she's going to be a snob. And it's not that they are ungrateful for their genetic gifts. So many doors wouldn't have opened if, if I hadn't been a model. They just want others to know the flip side. Girls can play mean. Virginia recently attacked by a female stranger at a train station. And I know it was nothing except the fact that I had my heels on, so I was six foot three, six foot four, made up, probably looked like one of, you know, a 60-year-old Victoria's Secret girl, you know, the hair flowing and there I am, you know, walking along the train station and she just decided, who the hell do you think you are? Smash! And bashed me, yeah, in the knee. Ruby believes she has missed out on job opportunities because of jealous wives and girlfriends. I was a personal assistant and the boss's wife really was intimidated by me and she'd come into the office and would just be really rude to me uh, and she'd hang around the office so I knew what was going on um, and that was obviously because of my looks. But social commentator Melinda tankard Reist says these women need a severe reality check. Women who conform to society's ideals about facial and body perfection uh, are often privileged. They're often privileged in our society and uh, they're not really the kind of women, I don't think, who are getting a hard time, who are really facing a tough life. I notice it sometimes when I walk into a crowd. PR guru and author Mano says she's lived with lookism all her life. In her new book, Unzipped, she advises others on how to deflect the bitchiness. Bitchiness only really comes from a fear in other girls' um, personas about what they're not feeling good about themselves. And it's often called, I call it transference. So they're transferring their own insecurities onto you. To make life smoother and, uh, you know, and more enjoyable for me, it's better if I downplay my looks and that way women don't um, react adversely that way I'm perceived as being you know more normal it is it's kind of sad in a way I would never want to be plain I've got good looks and I'm gonna use it and use it for as long as it lasts hopefully which will be forever Jackie Quist reporting we'll take a break then